So part A says we need to solve for this range of values of theta, the equation 5 sine 2 theta equals 9 tan theta, giving your answers where necessary to one decimal place. And it also says here, solutions based entirely on graphical or numerical methods are not acceptable. And um, so we're going to need to use some algebra um, to complete the question. And this is a six mark question. And first, I'm just going to write down the equation that we've been given. So that's 5 sine 2 theta equals 9 tan theta. Great. So we need to look at that and see if we have any thoughts about what we can do. Well, the first thing that jumps out to me here is we've got sine 2 theta. And in the formula booklet, there's actually an identity for that. So using the identity that sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta theta cos theta we can then rewrite the equation replacing sine 2 theta with 2 sine theta cos theta and the next thing that jumps out to me is that it's quite busy we've got sine theta cos theta and tan theta so to simplify it down a little bit i'm going to replace tan theta as sine theta over cos theta we can rewrite this i'm going to multiply out the bracket at the same time Right, so now I want to get rid of this fraction here. So I'm going to multiply both sides by cos theta. So we're left with 10 sine theta cos squared theta equals 9 sine theta. So look at this. The temptation could be to see that, oh, we've got a sine theta on both sides. So I'm going to divide through by sine theta and cancel it from both sides. However, we can't do that. We've got to be really careful. Uh, because we can't divide by 0, and in this case, sine theta could be zero. So we can't just divide through by it um, because we'll be losing solutions. When you divide through by zero, um, odd things can happen. and You can lose solutions and not get the correct answer. So we need to be really careful. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to bring the si 9 sine theta over to the other side by taking it away. So we're left with 10 sine theta cos squared theta minus 9 sine theta equals zero. And then we're just going to factorise out the sine theta. So we've got sine theta multiplied by 10 cos squared theta minus 9 equals 0. So this is great. Look at this. We can now say that, okay, sine theta equals 0 or 10 cos squared theta minus 9 equals 0. Um, so that's 10 cos squared theta equals 9. So cos squared theta equals 9 over 10. And if we square root both sides, that leaves us with cos theta equals. And because we're square rooting it uh, in an equation, we're left with plus or minus. And the square root of 9 is 3. So it's 3 over, and then it's going to be the square root of 10. Okay, so from the original equation, uh, we've got both of these now which is going to be much easier for us to solve. So starting uh, with the sine theta equals zero here, we say that theta equals inverse sine of zero, which actually, if you just put that in the calculator, you'll see that's zero degrees. And I'm just going to work with the cos theta quickly now. And there are actually a couple of things we can do here. Um, so we're going to have that theta equals inverse cos of positive 3 over root 10, or theta also equals inverse cos of negative 3 over root 10, which then if we put these in the calculator, we get, and then the question says to one decimal place, so we're just going to give it to one decimal place, we get 18.4 degrees and 161.6 degrees. However, our calculator doesn't give us all the solutions, so we've been given these three solutions to work with. However, there are more than this. So you might be able to see down here, I've drawn the sine and the cos curves. And using these, we can find the other solutions. So our range is between minus 180 degrees and 180 degrees inclusive, it tells us in the question. Um, so starting off with this, so theta equals zero. So look at this. Okay, so at theta equals zero, we can also see that ah, so there's a solution at 180 degrees and at minus 180 degrees. Okay, so up here, I'm just going to start writing out all our final solutions. So we've got 
what we originally worked out so zero degrees and from looking at the sine curve we got that actually also 180 degrees and minus 180 degrees of solutions and we're going to take a look at both these now so 18.4 well that is somewhere about here so we see okay so we've got one of the solutions here um but if we work back here we see it also across here okay we see because uh the cos curve is symmetrical this point here is 18.4 degrees so this one's at minus 18.4 degrees so we've got another solution at minus 18.4 so writing both those on we've got 18.4 degrees minus 18.4 degrees and last but not least we're going to work with 161.6 degrees so that's somewhere between 90 and 180 here so we've set it's about there and working down we can see okay so we have one of our solutions here uh, but drawing a line across here we've got another one all the way over here and again because uh, the cos curve is symmetrical here it's 161.6 degrees so here it's going to be minus 161.6 degrees so writing both these on we've got 161.6 degrees and minus 161.6 degrees and this is our, our final answer. So these are all our solutions to the original equation. So quickly look about through to see where we'll get the six marks from. We'll get the first mark for using both of these identities here. So getting down to this line here. We get the second mark here. Uh, so for creating um, this equation here. And then we get another mark here uh, for both this and this. So saying theta equals the inverse. And then we need both the positive and negative versions of these. And then we get the rest of the marks uh, for getting the correct values for theta. And if we got some of them right and not others, that's when you'd get either one or two marks because we got all of them, we're going to get all three. So we're now going to take a look at part B. So part B says to reduce the smallest positive solution to the equation, five sine theta of two X minus 50 degrees equals nine tan theta of X minus 25 degrees. And that's for two marks. So first thing I can see is that this equation in part B is actually very similar to the equation in part A. The difference being that theta has been replaced with x minus 25. So what I can do right down here is I can actually say that theta equals x minus 25 degrees. And we can just check that to see that's also true for this bracket because we've got the 2 theta equals 2x minus 50. Um, so that would mean that theta equals x minus 25 degrees. Um, which is what we've got here. Now I'm just quickly going to rearrange that. So we've got x equals theta plus 25 degrees. And now up here I've got um, our answer to part a. So these are all the possible values of theta. And we need to think about which value of theta to use to get the smallest possible value for x. And just by uh, looking at it, the one that it's going to be is minus 18.4. So we're going to sub theta equals minus 18.4 degrees which is going to give us x equals minus 18.4 degrees plus 25 degrees which means x equals 6.6 .6 degrees which is our final answer so looking to see where we get the marks where we get one mark for attempting to solve this equation here and then we get the second mark for the correct value of x